Hello everyone, and welcome back to the adventures of Molog Slugtongue. Last episode, we had to defend the blood grounds over to the west at Eringrad, where a large Kislev army came to attack the Herdstone. Now, it was a very close battle and we were outnumbered, but not only did we manage to win, but we also managed to eliminate most of Kislev's military strength. In fact, as far as I can tell, this is all they got left. And this is the remnants of the two armies that came and attacked us. So we got five units here and three there, although they are busy replenishing at the moment and recruiting some new ones. So maybe we'll see them get a bit stronger later. We'll have to wait and see. Now, while this was happening, we also took the capital of Kislev for ourselves, building a new herdstone and having some new blood grounds to play around in. So what I've done since then is before recording, I've gone forward a couple of turns just so we can start recruiting our new army, which we were able to do after the previous um, ritual of ruin. Now, I did open it up last episode for you guys to submit characters and units to feature in the campaign. And I've already got a couple of submissions. So thank you, Mr. Bones and Anirund Pakala for your submissions. If you're interested in submitting your own characters and unit names, then check out the previous episode where there will be a pinned comment down in the comment section with a link. You click the link, submit your character, and what it does with the Google form, it puts it all in one convenient place. So I can just click on it, go to the spreadsheet, and it'll have it all there. So when you submit them, I will use them at some point in the campaign, normally when I get new units or when I can recruit new characters. But I do have two submissions I've used for today. The third one I can't use because I haven't got a Jabba's life yet. But the leader of my second army, as you can see, is Malagos the Doomslayer. This character was submitted by Anirund Bakala, a longtime viewer on the channel. And if I click on the army, you can see he is, in fact, a Doom Ball. Now, his backstory is short but sweet. He is the Doomslayer. Fear him or be slain by him. So yeah, I thought that was quite cool. I picture this army being sort of uh, following Korn, the blood god. So eventually when we get the opportunity to do so, I would like to try and get the Khan of Blood, unlock Korn Gore units and feature a lot of these units as well as uh, uh, Minotaurs in the army. So that would be our goal for him. Now, Malog Slugtongue has got a new named unit as well, courtesy of Mr. Bones. And it is these guys here, the Tristed Corpses of Nurgle, although I couldn't fit the entire name in thanks to character limits. But I've got their backstory coming up on screen right now because it's a bit longer. But needless to say, the idea of beastmen corpses being controlled by maggots, which are being sort of sentient demons almost of Nurgle, just seemed really, really cool. Disgusting, but very cool at the same time. So thank you guys for your submissions. I look forward to seeing more from you both as well as the viewing audience. Now, I've spoken for about three and a half minutes going through characters and recap in the previous episode. So let's start things off by finishing off Kislev once and for all. Now Prague is going to be our first target. So if I grab Malagost, this will be his first blood, his blood in, if you were. Now you'll notice that he's already got access to a bunch of gores and stuff, even though he's only got the basic buildings. It's because I simply transferred the units we already had in Moloch's army over to his and recruited some new ones. So yeah, he's got a stronger force to start off with. But let's get you guys out of encampment. I mean, we could potentially attack Prague, but this army is in the way. So let's go after this Norskan rebel army. Should be a pretty one-sided fight. Oh yeah, definitely. Right, let's do that. Oh wow, that was cool. Oh, cool. Yeah, look at that. He's got horns, giant monstrous horns strapped to his arm like a gauntlet. Oh wow, that is really cool. Okay, um, instead of admiring the Minotaur, let's have a look. Sacrifice captives, kill them, or devour them. Devouring is not going to give us much in a way of replenishment, so I'm just going to go and kill them instead. Slaughter them in the name of the Chaos Gods. There we go. Oh, we actually completed a mission, locking horns. I don't see the Norskan rebels featured on here, but since every faction is at war with them, I presume they will count. 
extra 650 favor, so we we'll complain. Ooh, challenge complete. The unnatural order. Okay, let me check Herdstone. Okay, let me just check that out quickly. It's our challenges of the Dark Gods. So what I've been doing is researching the others simply because, well, I needed something to research. But we've now unlocked the unnatural order. The beastmen will not rest until all are trampled beneath their cloven feet, and they alone rule the wilds. An extra charge bonus for my main units. I'll take that over leadership for the moment. And we could actually go for these ones after too. So I presume that's the quicker one and that's the longer one, but... Causes fear when ambushing for all armies. Ooh. Centacores get a slight bonus. Extra ambush success chance. To be honest, I feel tempted to smell their fear. Having that ability for all my armies to cause fear when they attack, that's too good to pass up. Now, let's have a look at Prague a minute. Okay, there's a few units there, but I think I want Malagos to actually be attacking them so, so we can get some extra experience. Why? Oh, why? Can you see that? A little bit of red showing that we can't attack him. Crap. You know what, that's fine. We'll just grab Moloch instead. And we'll get you to attack. There we go, much better. Alright, decisive victory. I doubt we're going to take much casualties in this, so there we go. Alright, let's get through that. 7,000 favour. Take it. There we go, Manish full. So beastmen are Mongols. Yeah, yeah, plus four leadership. We'll give that to somebody. What the? Oh my. Oh wow, okay. So a new feature with the more recent update. I can't remember if it's in the base game or you have to sub um, get it basically by the, what's it, the Total War Network. But you can now recruit Ogre Mercenaries. So no doubt these guys will be featuring at some point in Warhammer 3. But uh, yeah, this would be cool to check out. So talking with tyrants. Cautiously entering the ogre mercenaries' camp, you realise it is not just a single ogre tribe that has arrived, but three separate... Thank you, phone. Three separate tyrants marching their armies as one. Furthermore, it appears that each tribe has its own combat preference, the likely reason they have grouped together. A reasonable bribe should be enough to convince one of the three tyrants to lend you some of his tribe's considerable fat-laden muscle. So we can hire the Head Eaters, the Death Belchers, or the Horned Guts. Or just leave. Okay, so what do we have? Ogres with dual weapons. Armor piercing, anti-infantry. Man Eaters. Right, now, I have to be honest. Ogre of Kingdoms was not a faction I was uh, majorly familiar with in Warhammer Fantasy. But I know the basics of them, like their... They're very inspired by the Hun Mongol aesthetic with their appearance and stuff, although they've got an ogre twist to them. And so you've got your standard ogres, but I remember the man eaters are mercenaries that tend to spend a lot of time in human um, realms. So not just the Empire, but places like Betonia, Kate, Araby, and that. So they tend to have, wear a mishmash of different culture clothing and stuff like that. And they do get access to stuff like pistols and great weapons. So, could we go for that? And then more fan cavalry are just basically ogres, wide and giant monsters. So, uh, yeah, that could be interesting. But you know what, I'm just gonna go try out these guys. Man eaters will be useful for the anti large. We'll have anti infantry men and armor piercing as well. So, let's grab you guys. And looks like Moloch was able to rec recruit them. So, let's pop over. Ooh, still claws. Let's check them out. Oh. Oh, did. Why? Because we had a full stack. It looks like we weren't able to get them. Oh, crap. You know what? That's fine. We'll just keep an eye out for them in the future. If we do see them pop up, because you notice the thing, circle, or symbol thing appear around them, then, yeah, we might see by reducing a couple of our units. We'll have to wait and see that. For the moment, though, we'll just go ahead and get you guys into encampments. Now, our next target is going to be Volksgrad. But with 15,000 in the bank, I think it's a good opportunity to upgrade some of our buildings. So if I go back to Moloch, and let's have a look. We could actually upgrade the base encampment itself. That would be useful because then we can get our hands on the Khan of Decay.
for Pestigors. But to be honest, what I'm thinking is I would like some characters for Malagost. So if we've got enough, let's have a look. We can get the Pell Totem. This will give us our Pestigors as well as a Wargore. And then I presume, how much is this? 6,000 will give us access to Bray Shamans. In fact, I think we can afford both, can't we? 8,000, yeah, 14,000. So yeah, we'll grab that. We'll grab that. And then we can recruit them in the following turn to give to Mal uh, Malagos. Yeah, that works fine. Sure. Okay, now let's quickly level up characters. So, Malag. We're going to give you Lord of the Black Harvest. Although, what was that one? Darkling Spirit. Ooh, it can summon a Saigor. Wow, twice in a battle. And we have the mod that doesn't make uh, summoned units degrade. I think there was actually a challenge we needed to unlock by summoning 10 of them in battle or something. So that will be useful, but I want to go for this one. First of all, finish off his personal skills. And then, Fadan... I can't get... Oh no, of course, we gave you four runners, so we can't... We can't give him a chariot if we want him to take advantage of Vanguard deployment. Right. Let's give you a plenish troops instead. And then Malagost got four points. We'll give you Gargantuan Hooves. I want to give him Lightning Strike. But the best one out of these skills, in my opinion, is Dark Apothecary. But it doesn't seem quite fitting for his character. You know what? We'll pretend there are some minor shamans who are sort of going around making sure that people are recovered well enough to be able to continue shedding blood for the Blood Guard. So I'll go in, all in on Dark Apothecary for the extra replenishment. And then that should be it. Let's end the turn. Right, the Dark Moon. More Sleeper's Ascendant, blah, blah, blah. We've already read through this once before when it popped up. So what do we want to go for? We're one force. Giving us full replenishment for two turns. Cost of skill. Uh, we're not really in, in a position to do that yet because we haven't. Oh yeah, wait a sec. I'll need to check something out. Uh, yeah, we'll need to de spend those in a minute. Plus 30% weapon strength. Endless herd. Out of these options, I'll be all honest. I'm going to go for beastly inclination. Get that extra weapon strength and melee attack for our armies. Now. During the intern phase, we had, as uh, if I go back on here, news that the League of Austenmark has been obliterated. And if I ever look down south, Austenmark is normally around here, isn't it? So, Talabekland has actually taken some of their territory. The Vampire Council are up here in force. I mean, look at that. So, so many places. Back of them, who is the Bone Rattlers? Isn't that, um, as, yeah, it is as Hag's tribe. Wow, they've arrived down here. Okay. Huh. Oh, and Hockland's around. Why are you heading this way, guys? Right, there are war with us. And the Rock Blood. Now, as you notice, I've, uh, cancelled my alliance with the Rock Blood during one of the end turn phases last time. Because... They end up drag nearly dragging me into a war with the High Elves, and I didn't feel the need to do that. So, uh, but yeah, these guys are heading our way. I have to be a little careful now, keep an eye on them, because if they go for Kislev... I mean, hang on, 14 units. Our garrison should be fine for that, shouldn't it? No, they're really, really not. Oh my god, why is your health so low? Now, it's not like we just captured Kislev. It's actually been about three or four turns. Why is your health so low? I have... Oh, who knows? Who knows? Anyway, we'll keep an eye on Hockland's army and see what happens. But for now, though, let's deal with these. Now, we needed to come on here a minute. Because we already got one Wargore. And we've only got one as our unit cap. So we need to recruit this one. To get our hands up to another one, which we can give to Malagost. Now, we've got this small army here. Now, to be honest, I wasn't going to worry about it, because I figured there's no way this army could take on the garrison of Kislev. But, uh, in hindsight, that might be the case. It actually will. So, before we send you off, let's head over here a minute. And let's have a look at our options. A strategist, disciplined, or booze cravens. Weapon strength. Okay. 
Well, I'm not going to go for Centaurs, so I'll tell you what, we'll take a Strategist for you. And then... An oh, hang on. What's that? Oh... <laughs> right, so that's how you hire best yoga listeners. Oh, how did I not notice that? <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Let's, um, recruit a hero again. We want to play Shaman. I'll check out those in a second. Um, no. Okay. Okay. Uh, not so good. Unsated blood first. Oh, right, it's just for Minotaur units. It's not that good, man. You know, out of these options, I think I'm going to go for you. Because Malagast has got confidence as well. Between him and Kaznar here, we'll have 20% rep bonus weapon strength and plus 10 leadership for all my units in Malagost's army. So, let's recruit you. Now, recruiting heroes do not take up movement, so that's why I did them now. So we can switch over and go after this army here. Now, they are in March Dance, so they can't retreat. And, goodbye. There we go. That was easy. Let's go ahead. Oh, wow. Two and a half thousand. That's pretty good. Let's slaughter them. Completed another challenge. Consume order. Okay, let's have a look at that one. Uh, one one. Where? Oh, here. Though they favor the flesh of men, the beastmen are indiscriminate in their hatred of all si- Cool down 10% reduction for my all my spells. And 10% reduction in cost. Oh, definitely want to go for that, man. So what, we'll do it after the in the next turn after we've done that. For now though, let's get you back into this. And let's get you heading up towards Volksgrad. What's the garrison like you actually? Okay, it's reasonable, but I think we could take them on. Let's get get you out of this then. Move you up to here. Did I make sure... Yeah, we should have just about enough movement. Yeah. You can rest up there then. Get some more replenishment in before we do the fight. Okay. Let's go ahead and give you Darkland Spirit now. Might as well get advantage of the Saigors. For Dance, we could give you the Razor Chariot, but I am going to give you Many Limbed Fiend. Extra melee attack and weapon strength will be useful. Galak... You've done all of those. I'm going to give you Call to More Sleep for improved melee defense. I think that's everything we need to do this turn. Yeah. Like I said, I'll keep an eye on Hockland's army during the end turn phase. One annoying thing, though, is that at the moment, as you can see, I can see everywhere, right? Yeah, when I click this and start the turn phase, all of a sudden... All the territory that doesn't have my armies in and that disappears. So in a way, it kind of feels like, well, what was the point of giving me access so I can't see during the end turn phase when units are moving around? Oh well, one of those... Wait. Did us just see the Bloody Hand tribe is now called the Da Crusade? Oh, that is so good. The weird thing then as well, talking about the, you know, the map disappearing with my vision, is that it actually reappears during the rebel phase. So it, it's weird. Anyway, ambush are discovered from another beastman horde. Completed the unnatural order. Okay. Grateful Paragons. The example you set is inspirational. The heroes under your command are proud to carry out your will and do so eagerly. The cost of all hero actions have fallen. I don't know if proud is quite, quite the right word, or is probably more scared, but uh, sure. Sure. Anyway, let's start dealing with these. Can we actually, I think we should be able to get folks grab this turn. So, let's get you guys in the army. I might as well start giving them experience and joining in the fights. And we do have enough movement to actually attack. Good. So let's do that. And attack. Okay, Pyrrhic victory. 
we won't lose any units if we do this, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. Took quite a few losses though. Damn. Okay. Let's do that. Extra 5,000? Sure. Picked up Confident Attacker, I'm happy with that. Oh yeah, did I give you your magical item yet? I have not. Alright, because we picked up the Steel Claws, so sure, you can have that. Did we pick up... I'm sure we picked up M Manish Fall. Or does that go to one of the... these guys? No? Huh. You know what, it doesn't matter, it's fine. Alright, let's get you to rest up. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is recruit a couple more of these guys, I think. Let's get some of these Ungor Herds. There we go. So now we have a full stack under our control. In fact, I'll tell you what, while we've got the movement, let's do that. And we can recruit one more. There we go. Easy. Right, so you guys have now done that. Let's grab you. Now, let's have a quick look at... Okay, no sign of Hawklands. Sure. Well, apart from that capital down there, obviously. Okay then, let's start moving you up towards Fort Ostrosk. Oh, actually, let's choose that and you can jump over. Right, what's the garrison like here, by the way? Oh, wow. That's really good. <laughs> okay. Oh, right, because they got tall walls. Right. Okay then, we'll have to attack them when we can. I right, got 10,000. Uh, you know what? Sure. I will spend 5,000 of it to upgrade there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot. I wanted to check out the ogres, didn't I? Um, so let's click. Right, it does cost me money to recruit them. So what do I want? Man-eaters or standard ogres? Well, we don't have much in the way of anti-large, I don't think. So I'm going to go for the man-eaters. Uh, we'll get rid of the dogs. I presume we're going to have to pay the 350 upkeep. Oh yeah, definitely. Alright, that's a shame, but it's okay, it's doable. Alright, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to, unless something happens, I'm going to skip forward a couple of turns until we are actually in a position to attack Fort Ostrask. So, yeah. Hopefully I only take a turn or two, but we'll see what happens. In the meantime, see you in a moment. Okay then guys, we're just in a position to now to be able to attack Fort Ostrosk, but I did notice that Hockland have gotten closer. Now for some strange reason, they are taking attrition, but a number of their units don't seem to be actually taking much. He is, but these aren't. I wonder why that is. But anyway, luckily for me, if I go on that garrison, our garrison is now back up at full strength, so we should have a good chance against them if we have to fight them. So for the moment we're going to focus on taking the fort instead. I'm going to allow Malagost to have the honor just so he can continue to level up a bit. And we'll be bringing in Moloch as well. Decisive defeat, definitely. Oh wow, we can have his entire army wiped out if we weren't careful. Now I could build siege equipment but I might as well just go ahead and attack. So let's move you up towards here. And, uh, excuse me. Fine, we'll do it this way. Right, attack. Okay, game will give us a pyrrhic victory. We will lose some of our gore units. What have I done here? But no, I'll tell you what. This is basically their last stronghold. You know? Let's fight the battle. We'll see how if we can take it. We've taken less casualties than the game's predicted. And then we'll be able to finish them off in the next episode. So, sure, let's fight the battle. So here we are guys, outside the fort, as Malagos charges ahead of his army in order to attack the gates. Now unfortunately, this is probably the biggest contribution he's going to do to the entire battle. So I'm just going to leave him here for now, and he can just keep bashing down that big door. While he's doing that, he's ordered the rest of the beastmen to follow in him to just attack the walls. And annoyingly, this is what happens when you order a whole bunch of units to try and climb up the walls at the same time. You have to babysit some of them because some of them will just run up to the wall and just stand there, even when you've ordered them to climb up. 
So I had to go through at this point just to tell some of the units, no, I want you to put some ladders up. <laughs> anyway, while we are scaling the walls back here, we've now got Malagos, sorry, um, Moloch, I should say, and his army making their way over to the other side of the walls. We see a giant stone getting thrown by one of the Saigor. I forgot all about that Saigor, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, do you remember him later? I basically just ask all of Moloch's army to form up here. And, well, as you just saw then, I start summoning them off and putting them in different targets. So a lot of the units like the Chaos Warhounds, the Centigors and that are going to be making their way over to this side. We're going to have the infantry making their way up onto the walls. I believe I've got Fodant here as well as Moloch making their way up to this little corner. And while they're all doing that, you can see across the walls that the rest of my forces have made their way up. Activating a vile tide right on here, just because why not? Oh no, that's not fine. Uh, that's his um Oh, what's it called? That's his skill that we've just picked up earlier this episode, the um, Lord of the Black Harvest. That did a fair bit of damage to that knight unit, didn't it? Wow. Anyway, the enemy have left a lot of their units down here on the floor, which is fine. The crossbowmen are trying to take some shots, but not doing that much damage, which is quite good to see. But across the walls, you can see one of the, most of them are just trying to run around, trying to get in position and run away from my gores. Now, these guys have made their way up, and I've got the ones with great weapons getting shot at by a little bit. But what I'm going to end up doing is seeing the opportunity to go after the Empire Knights. So these guys are running off the walls in order to try and chase them down. Now is it just me? Or are they just moving a lot faster than they generally do? Is that just me? I really can't tell. Hmm. Anyway, yeah, we're not going any faster for the replay, so I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> anyway, the enemy are still holding on with most of their troops down here. My troops are making their way up, but... We are slowly bringing them down to attack where we can. At this side, most of them have managed to get in position now to start chasing down the enemy. I did put... Oh, I was going to say, I did bring my Saigor to attack the knights, but I forgot to put them in hold stance. So he's just um, run up against the wall and he's going to not do anything. But... Oh wow, that looks cool. I didn't get to see this properly during the replay, but sorry, during the main battle, but that was the Saigor being summoned in with the dismantling spirits. Wow, that was a really cool way of doing it. It just like pulled its way through a portal. Wow. Anyway, he's now here. These guys are getting debuffed, which is great. And originally I was going to get him to fire at these guys, which is why he does throw a rock in their direction. But I end up changing their target pretty quickly to go after the horsemen and that back up here. I figured if we can kill some of these guys off easily enough, then we'll be able to take the gates. Now, in fact, that reminds me. If I slow things down a minute just to show these guys off. Where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Ah, here. Here are my man-eaters. Unfortunately, it's not a good picture because you can just see them in the back. But they look like a pirate aesthetic, which looks kind of cool, especially with the hats. But here they are with their great weapons. They're busy trying to smash down the gate, and they are doing a better job than Malagost is on the other side. But I'm realizing how long it's actually taken, so when I get a good opportunity, I am asking some of my units to run down into the control capture point in order to let the doors open up for us. But let's continue on for the moment. Over here we do have the Mortars trying to fire away, but I've been quite lucky in this fight. They haven't really done any casualties, as you just saw there, 20 kills so far. But across the map we are doing quite well. The Knights have been pinned in place, with my Ungor actually doing relatively well against them. We're now capturing several of the Towers, so we don't have to worry about them. And most of my forces are just getting down onto the walls now, onto the floor, I mean, ready for us to start attacking. Some of them, like the Gore Herd here, is just going to town against the defenders. This one over here doing the same. Up on the walls, we do have Lakshai Manbane going up against the Captain Yevkaven da Dazhev, if I pronounce that right. And looks like he's not alone. There's another captain back here as well. But between the Gore Herd itself, as well as my War Gore, 
he's gonna be able to be more than capable of taking them out. Now, speaking of uh, heroes, here's Malagost, still stuck behind the gates. Although I think now he's kind of stuck just in general. So, annoyingly, and you can see units uh, are running out through the gates. The gates are opening, but he's not actually able to do anything. So, apart from getting the odd kill him, oh wow, never mind, he managed to kill 15 despite the fact he spent the entire time on this side of the gate. How funny is that? Anyway, we've now caused a lot of the enemy to retreat at this point. We're bringing in spells like Mal uh, Moloch has got 84 kills, sorry 115 kills, and counting. Vile Tide is just such a useful skill to have. The Empire Knights are still hanging on here as well as the Mortars getting a few more kills. But with the gates now open, I'm able to bring in my other forces. So we've got the Beast of Gores coming down from the walls. Luckily not taking that much in the way of damage. There's Gallic Stoneheart. And I'm trying to spot now, where did I send the Man-Eaters? Just so I can show you guys from the front what they look like. Ah, oh, here they are. Here they are, right. So, for slow things down a moment so you can see. Look at that. Proper pirates. Complete with little moustaches. How cool is that? <laughs> But here is the Ogre Belly Plate. Now this is a feared weapon. They basically just charge forward and do belly, eh, a belly flop right into onto the enemy. Like a vertical belly flop, but bam, with a stomach. And yeah, that protects not only the stomach for doing damage, but it, when you think about it, for Ogres, their big part of their culture is the ability to eat and eat in all sorts of stuff. So it makes complete sense that if you're going to protect something on an ogre and your culture says your stomach is basically the most important part of you, it makes complete sense that you would want to protect it. As well as it allows you to do a ton of damage when you charge in with all that mass. But anyway, as you can see now, you, the enemy have decided to shatter and the fort belongs to us. I think I'd let my people just chase down a couple more. Oh no, I don't. Why did I think that? Anyway. Decisive victory, as you can see. So with that, let's go back to the campaign map and burn the place down. So there we go. Decisive victory. And I did take a couple more casualties than I would have liked, perhaps. But maybe I'm just looking at the unit cards, bearing in mind that some of the gore herds for Malagost had taken casualties and hadn't recovered yet from the previous battle of Volksgrad. So, yeah, I suppose that makes sense, thinking about it. Anyway, 127. He did do a fair lot of kills in that fight, to be fair. But, considering these guys didn't even fight at all, yet somehow we're able to get, yeah, 407, 34 damage. Yeah, it didn't work. Anyway, decides victory. 8,500 roughly. Let's go ahead and loot and raise. Alright, another challenge completes. Empire of Beasts. Okay, we'll check that out in a moment. Alright, thank you, thank you. Crown of Command for Moloch Slug Tongue. You know what? Sure. It might come in handy. Trickster Shards. 100% misclass chance. If I study uh, skill up against more wizards, definitely will be a useful one to hand out to somebody. Just to make it so that enemy will cast a miscast. And bear in mind that I do have the mod that does explosive miscasts for both myself and other enemies. So yeah, that could come in handy. For now though, let's just get you to rest up. And we will get you two as well. Oh no, actually, actually, let me check one thing. First of all, oh yeah, the garrison there is going to be quite easy to go after. Right, what I'll do, Slug Tongue doesn't need replenishment. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to start getting him to make his way back. Well, actually, it's barely any movement. Because I'm thinking we will have to defend Kislev from the looks of it. Yeah, we'll let him rest up, I guess. We can take advantage of the favor as well to upgrade a few things. So now that we've actually got this and this, I am going to go ahead and upgrade the main encampment so we can get our hands on Pestigors soon. Yeah, we'll do that with you. As for Malagos, is there anything I want to upgrade here? Pithoven will be useful because then we can recruit our own Agors, rather than having to rely on getting them from Moloch. Because unfortunately, 
yeah, we need another level up before we can get the fire pits. So for now, we'll let you have that. Okay, quickly level up our characters. So, Lakshai Manbane will give you Replenish Troops, Blade Master, and focus on Primal Instincts to start things off. Kaznor the Earthshaker, let's give you Spirit Leech. And to be honest at this point, I kind of just want to double down completely on Soul Blight. Having the ability to reduce enemy armor and weapon damage is just really useful. So we'll go ahead and do that. For Dance, let's give you another point in Deadly Blade, because we haven't finished that yet. Galak, ooh, personal skills. So we can go for, oh, I can only go for one. Strength of the Land, plus 23 armor. Why 23? Why not 25? It's a more rounded number. But anyway, plus 23 armor, missile resistance to all allies nearby, as well as himself. Wow, 123 armor. Hmm. Unrelenting Warherd for 15 attack for everyone nearby. Oh, that's just campaign actions. For the ability to allow him and all Minotaur units to cause terror. That could be useful. But I'd rather put that if I get a, a Gorbal for Malagast's army. But for this one, though, I'm going to go for the strength of the land. I think having the ability, given our troops are not exactly the best when it comes to armor, doubling their armor in some cases will be useful. So yeah, we'll definitely give you that. Then Malagast, let's give you... Rumination, bless my evil upon feast by man. Let's go for that. And then holy resilience. We'll give you lightning strike then, next turn. And... Yeah. Let's see what happens during the end turn phase. And then we'll bring an episode to an end then. So as expected, Ludenhoff has now attacked my herdstone. Now, of course, we need to fight this because if we allow it all to resolve with a close defeat, then we will lose the Herdstone and all that progress we've made. But I'm going to fight this battle at the beginning of next episode. So for now, guys, thank you for watching today's one. I hope you enjoyed and you do join me next time, of course, for some more Warhammer. But until then, everybody, take care and goodbye for now.